Hi, so welcome to lesson number three, module four of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. So in this particular lesson, we'll be talking about executing a MapReduce job. Now, before proceeding with the lesson, let's have a quick recap of the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, we have learned the difference between physical blocks and logical input splits. In this particular lesson, we'll be learning about the different MapReduce stages, the framework, and how the execution of MapReduce job happens, and some of the limitations of MapReduce version 1. So to summarize, in every MapReduce job, you have a mapper phase, a shuffle and sort phase, and a reducer phase. Now, in the mapper phase, you have to write a logic or a mapper program which can convert or create useful information from the given data set in the form of a key and value. Now, each map task usually operates on a single block. That means if your data is split across 10 different data nodes, each having one data block, then 10 mappers need to be run. Now, this will be handled by the framework. The second phase is called the shuffle and sort phase. Now that you all your key value pairs are created on 10 different data nodes, the shuffle and sort phase takes care of the task of assembling all the values of a particular key at one place. Now, this stage happens when all the map tasks are completed and before the reduce phase starts. Now, the third phase is the reducer phase. The output of your shuffle and sort phase is given as an input to the reducer phase. Now, the reducer more or less like does a kind of an aggregation job wherein you have to write a separate piece of code which will operate on the output of the shuffle and sort. So, usually the reducer will be presented with very less number of individual keys and large values. So depending on the number of values and your business logic, you can perform any type of operation on the reducer. Now one key concept that we might, we must remember throughout the course is that in MapReduce, the data is always in the form of keys and values. So we can see a pictorial representation of the same in this particular slide. And as you can see, the first phase is the input split phase and the original data is persistent data which resides on the hard disk of the data nodes. Now once your map task starts, then you have transient data and through the reduce task, the final output is again stored as persistent data. So that means you are reading persistent data from the hard disk and doing manipulations, producing a lot of intermediate data and finally storing it back as persistent data. And as you can see, the initial input and the final output both are represented in the form of key and value. Now let's analyze the step-by-step -step execution of a traditional MapReduce job. So if you want to submit a MapReduce job, the first step is copying the input files. Now definitely we need to have the input data to be present in HDFS so that the MapReduce program can run. So the first step would be to copy the input file. And once that is completed, the second step itself is to submit the job. Now, once the job is submitted, the input files info is collected. That is step number three. And the framework will create the logical splits. So step number four is creating the logical splits. And the job information is uploaded and the job is submitted to the cluster. Well, here in this particular example of MapReduce workflow, we are having a look at Hadoop version 1. So in Hadoop version 1, you have a daemon called Job Tracker. 
So the job tracker is the master daemon and it accepts all the jobs which are submitted to a cluster. So as you can see from my step number six, the job gets submitted to the job tracker and it initializes the job by putting it to a job queue. Now in a very large production cluster, there will be a lot of people submitting the jobs. So the jobs have been allocated to a job queue. From there, it will be processed one by one. Now, step number eight is to read the job file and then the necessary map and reduce phases are being created. So if it if the job tracker decides that there has to be 10 map mapper programs running on 10 different data nodes, that will be created and allocated. Now, as you can see from this picture, the job tracker connects to another demand called task tracker. Now the task tracker is a slave demand and it is available on every data node in the cluster. Now the job tracker will invoke the task trackers on the particular data nodes where your data blocks are residing and the actual map or reduce tasks are carried out by the task tracker. So the job tracker basically allocate the job, monitors it and collect the final information. However, the actual task is carried by the task trackers which are running on individual data nodes. Now some task trackers will execute only map tasks depending on the situation or they can also do map plus reduce task. Now, having said that, let's understand the limitations of MapReduce version 1, which is the default MapReduce on Hadoop distribution 1.x. Now, the primary limitations of MapReduce version 1 are scalability, resource utilization, and the support of workload different from MapReduce. Now, what happens is that inside Hadoop 1.x framework, you have a master demand called job tracker, just like I've explained, and the slave demands called task trackers. Now, the real problem that we have is the job tracker gets overburdened quite a lot of time. So, all the programs or jobs in a Hadoop cluster are being submitted to a job tracker, and its duties include initiating these programs, connecting to the task trackers to execute the job, monitoring the job progress, closing the job and even reinitializing the particular task in case a particular task tracker goes down or even an entire node down, node goes down. So you see the entire management is upon a single a daemon called the job tracker. So job tracker becomes a performance bottleneck in the Hadoop 1.x version. Now, apart from that, the other limitations are uh, one of the other limitation is scalability. Now, Yahoo has tested this practically and came up with a number that any cluster which crosses uh, a total number of data nodes as 5000 or more will practically suffer from poor performance issues based on the current design of job tracker and task tracker. So that means you are basically limiting the number of data nodes that you can have to 5000 and 40,000 tasks maximum. Now the next problem is availability. Now a single name node with a single namespace and job tracker was the single point of failure. Now, we must also consider name node here because to reach out to the individual blocks and the locations, the framework does contact the name node. So in Hadoop version 1.x, you have a single name node and a single job tracker, which adds problems to high availability. And the third problem is resource utilization. Now Hadoop clusters had never used their computational resource optimally. In MapReduce, the computational resource on each node are divided by cluster administrator into a fixed number of map and reduce slots. What this practically means is that imagine you have 100 data nodes in your cluster, then each particular data node will have a fixed capacity for the number of map and reduce tasks it can run. Meaning, maybe the particular data node has the capacity to run four map and four reduced tasks at the same time. However, 
in case if the task has not been allocated to that particular data node it will simply sit idle wasting those particular resources so the resource utilization is horrible in terms of mapreduce 1.x and last but not least the flexibility if all map slots are taken up and system needs more map slots these are not made available even if there are free reduced slots now apart from this there is a major drawback which is support for other third party applications now in a hadoop 1.x cluster every analysis program has to be in the form of a map reduce program that means if i have a tool such as giraffe for graph processing i cannot possibly run it over hadoop 1.x because hadoop 1.x accepts only map reduce as a way of processing so to wrap up in this particular lesson we have learned the map reduce stages framework and the execution of job that's all for this lesson